So I've got a 2019 Honda Civic. It was brought to me yesterday to uh, check and see why it's running rough. Quickly, when I start it, get in, I can tell right off the bat that it's running with a current miss. So naturally, what I do is scan the vehicle and see which one is misfiring. Mind you, just to show you, the vehicle has 35,000 miles on it. So I've been messing around with the vehicle, but in the beginning, number two had a misfire. Right now, I've got uh, these extra codes because of the testing I've done, but number two was misfiring. After swapping coil from two to three, made no difference. I decided to then go for a spark plug. Uh, again, this is all quick and dirty, just uh, first initial quick diagnostics of trying to see what the cause of the misfire is. And what I found was this was the spark plug. It's hard to tell because of the focus, but number two is all fouled up. And I actually took a picture of the four when they were out. Obviously you can tell that's one, two, three, four. Number two was the ugly looking fouled up plug. Once I moved obviously two to three, three started misfiring. So the initial cause of it currently misfiring is bad plug. And I know it's hard to tell but I took the bore scope and looked down in cylinder number two and it is filled with oil. So now after seeing the spark plug and the cylinder the way that it is, and all other three cylinders were clean, no oil, when I looked down with the camera. Most likely in a faulty place where the oil is coming from is going to be piston rings. This is, to me, it's surprising the low mileage and the year and, and all that. And being we only have one cylinder with bad rings, um, it, it's pretty crazy. I've not seen this on such a young engine, I'll call it. Especially Honda. Honda's pretty reliable. I barely get any Hondas in here because of how reliable they are. So because of that, I mean, it's we kind of pretty much done. But as always, I'd like to go a little bit further and practice, as I always say, when you already know the issue if you can scope and see what it looks like with the known bad issue maybe it helps you learn or helps you set up scopes and techniques and practices so on and so forth so I at this point am really just looking to hopefully see some sort of pressure in the crankcase when cylinder 3 actually my mistake cylinder 2 uh, comes up on compression and to do that, I will do a cold cranking no start and monitor the ignition coil one for a sink trace. I've got the reading the pressure in the crankcase. I've got a trace uh, amp probe for the relative compression on the battery. And I actually have an uh, intake pulse uh, transducer as well. So I'll do cold crank no start and see what all those traces look like. So I'll go ahead and do the crank no start now. And now I will do a crank and cold start run idle. Now this is that waveform from the cold cranking. Now I must say again, this vehicle was brought in yesterday. Running, it was missing on cylinder two, and, and that was all. I let it sit overnight after finding the oil and pulling the plug yesterday. Uh, I did get a new spark plug, installed it for, or I did get a new spark plug for today, but that obviously is not gonna take care of the mechanical issue. This cranking waveform that I just did is after it sat overnight. No heat, no nothing in the engine. 
and a first initial crank and I cranked it for a long time and I usually do no gas pedal uh, when I do my cranking to get good intake waveforms but on this section I went for a long time and no throttle opening and then I did open it here for a little bit and then I closed it back down here. The reason why I opened it was I, I'm not too concerned with intake pulses on this engine because obviously seeing the oil uh, and already we know it's going to be in crankcase but I wanted to increase the compression pressure to try to increase the chance of the pressure rising in the crankcase with more air being ingested to create more pressure to then bleed off. As far as the crankcase pressures, it's here in the yellow. They look pretty well uniform. I'm not seeing a great peak of compression pressure going into the crankcase and so then I'm not even capturing in there what I was sort of expecting to see from cylinder 2. We're looking for crankcase pressure in the crankcase as far as differences and as you can tell well it's hard to tell but not one is standing out to have great pressure particularly number two in the crankcase while cranking okay so now we'll take a look at that trace from idle the start and idle this is where we cranked it vacuum dips down in the green and starts to stabilize we'll pick this point and the yellow is going to be the crankcase that is on now we are having activity there I know it's kinda of hard to pick up on camera but uh, let me see if I can show you so as you would expect but we didn't see on cranking now when it's mapped out this way so it's one three four two back to one you've got a high pressure pulse air and a high pressure pulse air so three four two so two and three are companion cylinders the two cylinders in the middle of the block those two travel the same direction so at this point where pressure rise three and two are going upwards at this point three and two are going upwards two is going on compression here two is going on exhaust here we know three is okay we're not having misfire trouble codes there and the spark plug was fine being that at this upward travel of cylinder two is increasing pressure in the crankcase from this measurement we know now 100 percent for sure on the waveform that the compression compression is being lost through the piston rings into the crankcase because of pressure rise at TDC points for cylinder number two so at this point there's not much more that we can do we've physically visually verified the oil in the cylinder for number two our thoughts turn to piston rings and then verifying with the scope and pressure waveforms and data that on there we can see pressure pulses in the crankcase when two is on top dead center either compression or exhaust with that I will have to give the customer the news and tell him what he's going to be looking to deal with and kind of go from there but short quick simple a way to verify with the scope once you know what a problem is or if we didn't know what the problem is this is one way of setting up and measuring for crankcase pressure to look for bad rings other than that thank you for watching hope it was insightful and that's it for now until the next one